Arithmetic to Algebra As you are graduating from junior to middle school, we are changing over from Arithmetic to Algebra. Let's see how. Okay, So I'll take here a few situations and then we'll compare how we graduate from Arithmetic to Algebra. Right. So I'm making here two rectangles. So I have two rectangles and I'll write some numbers here. Let's say this rectangle it has a width of 2 centimeters and length of 4 centimeters. Now in this case, I don't specify any length or width. I just say width W and length as L. Now in that case, you tell me what is the area of this rectangle? We say, well, the area of this rectangle is 2 times 4. I write 8 centimeters square. Good. And how about this area? We say, well, this area is area equals to W times L and unit square. We don't know what the unit is, so that is not known. We even don't know what length is and what width is, but we can say whatever it is, just multiply them, okay, and get the area. Okay, great. Now, how about a circle? So, we have a circle here and we have a circle there. Now, in this particular circle, with that as a center, let us say that we have a radius of r, okay, in this particular case. And here, let's fix the radius and let's say we have radius of 3 centimeters, okay. So, if radius is 3 centimeters, then what is the area of this? Well, area of a circle is pi r square. So, this time we need to do some calculations. We say area of this circle will be pi r square. Now, radius is 3 and therefore I will write this as pi 3 square. Pi 3 square means 9 pi. Correct. Now, units will be centimeter square. So, we will write 9 pi centimeter square. Good. So, that is the area of our circle. Now, this circle, what is the area of this? Well, I can only say the area is pi r square. Okay. I don't know what this is. So, I will just say unit square. So, I write very general way of doing it and I say this is my circle with area of pi r square. Now, what do you notice in these two cases? Very important thing which you notice here is that in the first case, we have fixed numbers, right? So, this is all about arithmetic and here what we have, the numbers are not really fixed. We have some variables. You could assign any number to it. For example, in this rectangle, we could say width of 2 and length of 4. In that case, I get the same area. And if I use the centimeter square as a unit for area or dimensions in centimeters, I get exactly the same value. Correct? So, what we notice here is, it's kind of same thing. The only difference is, if you see these two sides, then here we have something which is fixed and here we have something which is variable and mainly because there is something variable means you can put any value here right of course it should be meaningful right now radius for example has to be positive length and width they should be positive right I just can't say negative numbers for them but any variable with sensible values correct so that is what it is but they are kind of similar situations. Now, this part which we had been dealing with, where we always were working with fixed numbers, we say that to be arithmetic. So, this part is arithmetic for us. And here, when we introduce some variables, then we start calling it algebra. But we kind of do similar operations. When I get back to operations, like what operations we're talking about? Operations, as you saw, we did multiplication here, right? Now, we could do addition also. For example, if we find perimeter of this, so what is the perimeter? So, well, perimeter of this is sum of all sides, right? So, it is 2 plus 4, and then there are two of these. So, we can multiply them too and get 6 times 2 is 12 centimeters. Now, in this case, what is the perimeter? Well, the perimeter is length plus width, and then we can multiply them by 2. 
and that units will be same as units for length and width. So we can do addition, multiplication, division, things like that. Okay. So we can do all these things. So what we have here is common thing is operators. We call these plus minus as operators. So the operators for us are signs like plus, minus, multiplication and division, right? So these are the operators. So we have the same operators for arithmetic. We have exactly same operators for algebra also. The only difference which you should note here is that in algebra, we always have a variable. So that is kind of a must. So in algebra, always have variable. That is kind of critical for us. And here, arithmetic is without variables. So that is one major difference. And now, if we have something like combination as we saw here, when we say 2 plus 4, when, I mean, I mean, I meant to write 2 plus 4. When I say 2 plus 4, we will call this as arithmetic expression. But here, if I write length plus width, then we call this as an algebraic expression, right? So we'll introduce you to two new terms, which is algebraic expression and arithmetic. expression. So in arithmetic expression, expressions, we have numbers, additions, multiplication, things like that, correct? For example, here you saw pi is a constant. Pi is not a variable, right? 9 pi. 9 times pi. Now in this case, we have a variable r. r could have any value. Do you see that? So that makes it algebraic expression. So algebraic expressions will be expressions which will have variable and from now onwards, if some expression has a variable, we'll just call it algebraic expression, right? Now, in this playlist, we'll discuss how to translate phrases or real-life situations into algebraic expressions and then understand more about algebraic expressions. And in the next unit, we'll talk about algebraic equations. So when we talk about algebraic equations, we will introduce you to equal to sign and finding values. For example, here, when I say area equals 2, then it becomes algebraic equation. But when I don't write that, then we are only talking about a thing, which is pi r square, which we know is area, correct? But we're not trying to calculate it out. At that time, we are worried more about the expression how to represent area in mathematical language. So that part is algebraic expression, right? I hope you got a kind of feel about it. So go through the coming videos and understand what is algebraic expression and how to translate phrases and sentences into algebraic expressions and then solve problems later using algebraic equations. That is going to be extremely interesting. All the best. Thank you.